Welcome back everyone and today we will show you how to play survival chaos and we got a full community game with myself, Aegis, Empress and Syntec. We're gonna be playing with the Undead race but survival chaos um, it's essentially a really long tug of war between four people in the free for all uh, kind of style web. The AI will spawn units for you that you will upgrade and you will send heroes and Ultimately, you will go for ultimate weapons to try and overcome your enemies and that ultimate weapon Whether that's gonna be a nuke to deal damage to your enemy bases or smite to kill enemy special units or To suck away enemy mana or one of the many other stuff you can do with the ultimate weapons uh, You can only pick one if you decide to go for one you cannot Unchange that you will be stuck with that decision for the rest of the game so every move we will make in this game we will try to over explain why we are going to make the move so that people can play this game a little bit easier so we're going to be going into test mode so that we can go for all pick we will write test to disable cheating and then we will have to find the other race so the other race definitely not one of the easy races they are quite unique thanks to the blight system here their strongest bonus is actually to go defensive but yeah there's a lot i can tell you about the racing game there are actually 24 races all of them do play slightly different even though you kind of play it in the same way where you upgrade your barracks in this way the crypts necropolis a lot of upgrades and tower upgrades you just have to know what to go for as a new come to survive chaos it's really hard to know what is powerful for your race um, you just have to play it and if you want to go for a bonus and you're new to the game, I would personally recommend going for an early game bonus. Because that will make your early game a little bit easier. You will have an easy time to control the battlefield. Well, yeah, in the end, going for a late game bonus will make you more powerful late game. So if you go early game, that might hit your late game power, but you will start off easier and you can upgrade a little bit easier as well. Um, so we will go for late game bonus, the tier 4 unit, which only comes out every second wave with a tier 4 crypt. So we're not going to be playing with a bonus for a very long time to come. And this has been a request, so we will go for that one. Um, as the undead, you are one of the weaker earlier races. But once you get the race that, you are often going to be fine. Um, also, I will not explain every race in the game, I will not explain every single bonus here because there are 24 races in total and every race has 12 different bonuses which would make up for 288 total bonuses in this game and yeah, it's just too much to explain that in a single video but all the races do have hero items which does empower your heroes Enter hero to disable and kill off enemy heroes a little bit easier while getting more gold for killing them. And then we also have the base event. There are two types, the anti-global which gives you spell damage resistance and the one for the undead. That also increases your barracks health. Which is quite a nice one to have. Uh, but yeah, Empress has kept the neutral building already. <coughs> it's looking strong early on. He might have been upgraded against me. You can only capture neutral buildings with special units. Or... Um, tier 2 units. And tier 2 units with siege damage comes out at a tier 2 barracks. Seems like Empress didn't go for us. But we wanted to be prepared. He's playing with storm chasers. The mages. They're kind of scary. But Wild Hammer is probably the most broken race in this game. Because they have 2 to 3 Air units, while well, the undead has zero, but I would not say the undead is weaker than the wild hammer, but they are definitely broken for a lot of race to deal with. So we need the web early on so that we can put the aerial units to the ground. And he's playing with the Aegis with the... what is it called? The mana burn. Might go into on the other side. We will ignore the middle lane. <coughs> if you control the middle lane, you will end up getting a lot of gold. But it's essentially pointless for us to try it. Because if we upgrade here, we will lose our units to Aegis. And we will end up feeding him more units. For every unit you slay in this game, you will get more gold. 
and giving him more units to slay, yeah, just gives him a massive, massive um, start compared to us. So yeah, we're gonna be behind, but we should be good on tier 4 barracks. For the undead, if you want to do well early on, you need one level of the infused stones because you will unlock the DK aura, which deals 10 damage per second to enemies around you. And the extra uh, skeletons from your necromancers will definitely help out on your army strength as well. We are winning this lane. We are winning this lane, although Aegis might have gone tier 2 now. No, you didn't. So since we're good, I will save up a little bit of gold and go for the race there. Also, Syntec is playing with the Blood Elves, which is also quite the broken race. <coughs> We're not gonna have fun fighting the uh, Blood Elves since they have plenty of AoE damage, which is very, very good against the Anand, obviously. So we're gonna get the race death, which will make me a little bit more powerful on the battlefield. And then we can upgrade this Middle Crypt to tier 2, and then we'll, we might actually be on par on arm strength with Aegis. <laughs> nice one the whistle. So if you guys have any questions or if you guys would recommend me to explain something special during this video Then please viewers do recommend me or just simply ask <coughs> We're not looking too powerful here, but we will once we go for the Once we're done researching the necromancy also for the other that you really want the permafrost for the banshees which will be actions that you spawn at the Barracks with special abilities. The race dead is also very good to get a few more uh, units on the battlefield. It will be your death knight summoning them. And the Vampiric Aura also very useful, of course. As well as the evasion. For tier 4 units, the death flash to reduce damage. And the disease cloud to reduce armor and deal damage upon death is just incredible. So I'm gonna get the armor now. We might not need it yet, but I just can't wait for it. Whatever clan actually did win the deer. That's surprising, but those storm chasers. Even I am not even quite certain what they are capable of, but I think they have once extra spell damage uh, ability. But even for me, it's very difficult to remember 288 bonuses, and I've not even seen everyone, every single bonus in the game myself. Please raise that should be a little bit more useful there. Use one defense spell. As the undead, it's actually okay to be spending a little bit of mana early on because you will refill your mana decently quick with the um, soul rip ability, which will which enables you to get mana for killing enemy heroes, which is very very lovely. Let's go for the Sunrise weaponry. But as long as we get through the early game, we should be okay. Although the Wild Hammer Clan could be unlocking their bonus air units. Which is gonna be a nightmare to deal with. Also, the Undead is a little bit crazy when it comes to the heroes. Every race, other than the Undead, have three heroes. A Strength one, a Agility one, and an Intelligence one. And also special unit, which are your late game killers. But we do not have special unit, we got four heroes. So that's a small weakness for the undead. But with their late game summoning, you are usually gonna be fine. Very good that the necromancer is walking ahead of his army. You might be taking a lot of damage there if you do not buy unit. Normally, it's okay to take that little bit of extra damage on your base because it will be repaired before enemies can start nuking. But in this case, the Crusader army is just too strong here to ignore. So we have to at least kill a few of those units with siege damage, the cavalry. They will deal a lot of damage to your base, 150%, oh 200% damage even. Yeah, you do not want them hitting your base, because they will kill your barracks in seconds. And once you lose the barracks, you can never get it back. So yeah, we're gonna be not taking the initiative here. 
Wild Amber is the strongest race at this stage of the game, I think. Uh, and he's on the tier 2 main building already. I know that because he is running 5 attack damage. You can only get 3 at default for a level 1 necro uh, Necropolis. So we might be seeing his Aeons pop up as soon as well. So it's about time we get erased that ability ourselves. To be able to fight off the guy a little bit better than this. Although I need to keep going to free against him because we will see. Yeah, we're gonna be seeing those aliens there right soon. Because those aliens will be a handful for us to kill since those crypt friends cannot hit them. We might be needing a few extra mages and skeletons to deal with it. Now let's go for the armor and then the uh, then necropolis. Yeah, there they are already. Yeah, with six siege damage, I think we went tier three here at the right moment. Of course, we might end up slightly feeding Empiris, but he's already snowballing. We do not want him to go too far ahead. But I'd rather not lose the uh, barracks here. But crazy enough, this only bones unit just got two hundred more health than my tier three unit. That's that's crazy. At least the health should be a little bit lower, I think. Um, how does redirection work? That's a really good uh, question. <clears throat> um, essentially, your enemy units and heroes will attack the unit of building that attacks lastly. Usually, it's the crypt attacking first, so by default, the enemies will hit the uh, barracks first. But if there's an enemy here nearby, just hit the hero with the building you want to redirect the army towards. So, if you do that, if you just simply do that, they will start here uh, attacking that specific building. Just make sure your other buildings will not hit the hero because you might be redirecting them again to another building. And that's probably not what you want to do. Um, when it comes to enemy units, yeah, it's a little bit trickier to get them redirected the way you want to. That's crazy how we are struggling with a tier 2 barracks, uh, tier 3 barracks against tier 2. Oh, he's tier 3 actually. Oh, look at that, those freaking siege units are head heading towards the barracks. <coughs> That's what I mean, because the barracks hits them first, they will just go for the barracks. And now we upgrade here, that loses the uh, aggro for a second. <coughs> this is the first time we actually see bone golems ourselves. But it just says how stupidly overpowered these Bones units the are. So, and those units having siege damage dealing to 100% damage to the buildings just enables them to kill your barracks way too quickly. It's such a pain in the ass. At least with tier 4 we might just be fine against Empress for a little while. We will probably get 6-6 uh, upgrades soon. Because we have to invest so much gold here, we are growing weak on the middle lane. Where Aegeus and Kelta uh, Syntec some their own heroes. One of them will lose a hero. Heroes cost 1000 gold, so that's gonna be a big loss for one of those two. <clears throat> but yeah, those Aeons are one of the most difficult things to redirect. We really need a web if we can and snare them to the ground. We'll have a slight easy time to them. But the undead, one of those races that actually struggle the most against the Wild Hammer, even with Tier 4. <coughs> Just simply because we cannot hit A units with our range units. Not until you have the web plants. It's fair out for us to get rid of them. He might be messing up a massive aerial force here, which we might need the hero to send. If you are going to be unaware of that, you will be in a lot of pain. Let's get a weapon lens. We will need an ASAP. Winter attack rate is great, but let's just go for the defense one. 
Hey there, x Lord. nice to be seeing that. The latest page, uh, batch, yeah, we've not played it that much yet, but it's a really nice one. I'm loving it so far. If we can get the web glance upgraded at the right moment, we might be able to kill the aerial units. If not, then oh boy boy, we're doomed. I will find a way to defend it. But look at that, man. This is just so annoying. Even at this moment, we actually have to use a <coughs> extra units to buy to stop this Feral Griffin from raiding the crypt. Uh, yeah, that's one of the few broken things in my game, in the game, in my opinion. Let's go raise that. Let's get the Banshees up, and then hopefully we will recover from here. <coughs> also, those Feral Griffins. If we did not go for the air unit to attack them. We would not have been able to redirect him at all. But it's still kind of fun to see at some kind of introduction match to survive chaos. To see the broken things. <laughs> Look at this man. He's just messing up such a beautiful force. Let's get some extra damage up. Yeah, hopefully we can kill those guys before they get a big force, but he's already winning this big time. And fun enough, despite investing so much gold on the left side, we are still somehow on par with Aegeus. Because he probably has a lot of gold at the middle lane. I just did to spell. <clears throat> Let's go for beautiful Artis. And I think we should be able to recover from this. Not in why he still hit the barracks. But if he can recover from this, we should be okay. I'm just a little bit annoyed about my mana levels in the barracks self. In the meantime, Syntax just grows more and more powerful. Alright, I think we might be able to recover now. <clears throat> yeah, that's why we had to send a few gargoyles this game to stop the uh, Feral Griffins from hitting the barracks. Because those units do hit the uh, Feral Griffins and then they attack your own uh, units. That's a massive, massive pain to deal with. At least we get uh, ranged skeletons. That should be fun. Egg is casually beating us up as well. <clears throat> Let's go tier 3 here. We should be safe on this side. Also him going for the mana burn. It really sucks for my death knight since they actually carry mana. Same for the Blood Elves, they also got a lot of mana. It's a really nice pick for the Crusades to go for the mana burn. Definitely want the Death Flash up and the Disease Cloud if we get Tifo Barracks everywhere. But Syntec Cassie winning this middle lane is just really bad news for us as well. We do not want the blood of stack us here, but it could be happening. It could be happening, really. Yeah, I don't want two barracks getting hit. We 
did not go for the uh, fortifications. <coughs> so he should be careful because he might be taking damage otherwise. He, that's why he's using a tit to spell. And he's probably gonna be good. Also false stat. That means a lot of aeons together with the heroes uh, is gonna be incoming. That ain't gonna be pleasant for us to deal with. Tito magic from the Crusaders. With fire damage. Burns away my units. Yeah, it's gonna be an incredibly difficult game here. Cuts would attack us then. That would be great, but we do need the Howling Ghost available to defend it a little bit easier. Once the one is to rule them all. <laughs> yeah, but we need a hero here for 1000 gold. We need a hero for the 1000 gold left side. Yeah, we're gonna be in a world of pain. Akata's still running around there, which is not good news for us. Pure hatred. Yeah, she got some disable hour against heroes, which is kind of cool to see. She better not go too deep. She might be a dead girl. Six seconds, so we have to somehow survive the other lane as well. Maybe Arts would have been the better pick. But once once rule them all right. Gonna go Tiffany on the barracks yet yeah, there. Which we should be able to redirect fast that and the brave dwarves. Let's get redirected from the Necropolis, we took plenty of damage there. We are re redirecting them as well as we possibly can. <clears throat> Gonna go tier 3 mid lane because we know the blood is a tier 3 with still... Um, Kelda's standing over there. Really those bears just casually kept hitting the Grift. Lovely. So we're definitely in trouble here. We can recover from this. It's not looking good. You went for a hero with Brigitte. But we, yeah, it's natural that it, with the other two struggled a little bit early on. But the Wild Hammer Clan is just making my life a true nightmare. We gotta be respecting for that. <sighs> Need to be careful here because we know what's gonna be incoming. God was just doing so well at the middle lane. Still struggling to deal with those aeons here, aren't we? Let's get the infused stones up. Look at this, man. This just really kills all my necromancers and immune summoning. At least the slow we are here on the counter attack, the longer time we might have to recover a little bit. Yeah, maybe we have to purchase another research of the ensnare. Let's go tip for you. <clears throat> Hopefully that will enable me to control the middle lane. Hopefully a abomination will be spawned here, uh, thanks to Zavanas. And we definitely want tip for barracks everywhere, get the disease cloud up. And then we should be quite powerful. The pick hour would be a wonderful one as well. But Zavanas needs to win that fight. Let's redirect him towards the top tower.
Let's try to get him towards the mid. Let's try to get him on the middle barracks. Get a few extra units from there. Trying to spread the damage on my wall base as well as we can. <clears throat> People closely watching are seeing a decent redirection there. Let's go for the disease cloud. Let's go for the death flash. And we should be in slightly better shape. It's only tier 3 there. Sadly, Savannah's not getting all the reinforcements he needs at the middle. At least Kalthazard will be okay. Hopefully we're not going to be losing out on another wave. We seem to be killing him just quickly enough. You have to be careful about Colin. He's gonna be pain in the ass. 40 seconds before he can send out Artis, which might not be enough. <clears throat> yeah, those Griffins, in my opinion, just have a little bit too much health to start with. They got 200 more than my air units. And they can spawn at tier 1 barracks already. I will use the 2 spell to beat off this wave quickly because this barracks might be falling otherwise. It got 3 different types of siege damage. Hopefully we will not lose too many units at the middle lane because I want Savannah to control the middle lane there for us. The more units we lose the more like this that we will be losing control over it. Normally you just want to use the tier 2 spell <coughs> to counter a sandwich to be when you're at least attacked from two different sides. But if we didn't use it, we probably would have lost the barracks already with those bears. Just ignoring my army and go for the barracks. Which they had no right to do. And they still did. Let's just armor up. Let's go for another weapon lance. We need more snare against the and longer snare against mighty Empiris. <clears throat> Seems like Zavanas is losing this fight against Keltas. Really pretty disease cloud a little bit stronger than the Death Flash, although Death Flash is gonna be wonderful later on. Losing damage and spell damage. No, might still struggle a little bit with us there. Tier 3 against tier 3. Let's go for another infused stones. <clears throat> and hopefully this bear can recover before he can start nuking. Yeah, it's very hard to redirect in this game, <clears throat> but um, it does look easy, but if you do it yourself, it is often a lot harder than it looks like. Let's get the extra armor. Nice steel. Let's get one soul rip. At least the Wild Hammer will struggle a little bit with our wave there, but only a little bit. And the other side of the middle lane looking quite creepy. Yeah, we're not gonna get too much gold for the next minute. <coughs> so he'll be attacking us. We will be losing this fight as well soon. And he does send Lachna, the intelligence hero. With the healing spell, he's gonna be very hard to deal with. So we have to be careful. We might need a hero against the elves at the middle lane. I don't think they will attack me there. 
Oh, Emperor is actually struggling against Syntec. He's using Menace Shield. At least he cannot do me that. That's good news. But he's slightly under pressure. I like it. Also at the bottom. Good redirection to get him on the uh, air. Oh! <coughs> it's in two. Level 11. Maybe that's why he went for the level 2 eerie. That's gonna be quite wild. In the meantime, we shouldn't ignore the fact that we are gonna be under attack on two different sides. So, yeah, I don't think the Wild Emblem Clan will be the defeated, but the Bloodos might be killing a tower there on our side. And look at that massive incoming wave. Good lord. You can use that too. <clears throat> oh, we can use the defense one there. <clears throat> and Kaltus can at least freeze the enemies in place. He's sadly behind the barracks. Can't be killing them quicker, man. And uh, Falset already coming in. <coughs> and Nuprek used the burst strike to go in a little bit too deep. So we might be losing him in a fair unfortunate way a little bit too early. That's not what I expect there. I kind of expect Bajit to be attacking us. To be stuck in my base. But man, we are in for surprise there. And defending the left side is gonna be quite difficult then. Can we get Renault at least there? <coughs> we cannot wait any second long with the tier 2, come on. Otherwise we will take significant damage. We even lost Kelters there. And then the new break for some reason. <coughs> Normally wild damage. <coughs> yeah, that was very unfortunate to be attack uh, getting attacked from three different sides. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, then ouch, ouch, ouch. But even though we lost the early barracks, we can still win this. Let's keep upgrading. We want this on tier 4. We're gonna be in a bad position against Empress, but we have to be in that all game. When's the 5k subs party stream? Asks QZ. Um, <clears throat> yeah, good question. I don't even know how uh, what kind of party to do that. <laughs> If anyone has a good idea for party, then please, please let me know. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, this game has been a pain in the ass. We can go man shield. That will enable me to buy ourselves a long time. Or oh, even into middle lane. Yeah, I guess the blood else just wants to kill me now. <clears throat> but blood elves are gonna be running over everyone soon. We're lucky to lose that left barracks, but that one single time where those Aeons kept hitting it just really killed me. No, it was not meant to go middle lane, I guess. Well, it happens. It happens. Empress does not have to focus me all too hard anymore at the top since he already destroyed his barracks. So he can still fight off the Bloodos really well.
Yeah, I would agree with that. Let's get one crippling cold, and we have to be prepared for them to lane. Ay, 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 and he's probably still for magic already. <coughs> yeah, that's not gonna be f that much fun to defend against. But yeah, we have an insane amount of pressure uh, in this game. Maybe m a lot more than you would normally expect, even with the undead. But the undead just struggles so much against early uh, air units. Because their range units do not hit air, like most other raids do. Yeah, we will have to find a way to defend this, but it can be very, very painful. Also because Intel is already level 17. We might be dead here. Yeah, I think we're dead. <coughs> Whether we like it or not. <sighs> and let's be real, we had more attention probably than we otherwise would have. <laughs> I think if we had a different bonus we might have been able to defend everything better than we had to deal with there <coughs> but yeah Especially with the early tier 2 units, the bonus units from the, uh, it's not tier 2 units, just bonus air units from the Wild Hammer. We always would have struggled. Well, it was a fun game. I hope everyone understands survival chaos a little bit better now. I hope this video has been quite informational. That's the most important thing. As the game itself, it doesn't show probably how fun survival chaos actually can be. Because we had a lot of folks on our face. And we'll fight against three really experienced and strong enemies and generally it was a really really cool game um, but I really hope the redirections and everything did help out greatly um, it's safe to assume that the Bloodless will win this uh, especially with their strong special unit uh, that's already so highly leveled up and their racial strength and also the fact that they had full mana um, but either way a really really difficult game here for us even if we did not try to explain the game into more detail than we normally would we probably would not have been able to survive the early game maybe with different bonus like i said if you want to survive the early game getting early bonus would help you out and we didn't have it and we didn't survive the late game potential that we could have had with the undead but it's such a fun fun race my favorite race, so I feel bad for losing this early on. <laughs> but if you guys would like to see more informational videos like this, then please let me know.